In this video, I'll be completing the next part of my ladder inspired furniture build series by making this center console and top shelf add-on that will tie in with the existing bookshelf I built in the last video. The project is filled with many design changes, a few mistakes and much, much more. So follow along as I take on this challenging build. <laughs> The project starts the same as before by selling a kidney and purchasing some more Tasmanian oak timber. I'm going to start this time with the legs and to do that I once again cut strips of timber and laminate them together to form a, a figure piece. And finally, all the legs go through the thicknesser in order to reduce them to their final width. With the stock for the legs now complete, we can turn our attention to the top shelf. The shelf itself has exactly identical dimensions as the previous one we made in the last video and is made in exactly the same process. First I break down all the components on the table saw. Then using the miter gauge we set a 7 degree angle for the sides. This creates the tilt or the angle for the legs to follow. Then it's over to the router table to create the front bevel. And then rounding over the front edge with a round over bit on the trim router. And just like the previous shells, I'll be using dominoes to connect it all together. So far I'm finding the domino to be a very easy to use tool, however making sure that you reference the right surface or even which surface to be referencing in the first place can be quite confusing. I'm still trying to get my head around how best to place dominoes and if there are any viewers out there in YouTube land that have some tips or even resources that they've found useful on how to best use their domino, then I'd be keen to hear from you in the comments. The side panels here are probably the most complex part of the domino joining process as there are multiple reference surfaces that you need to get right here. It's not just the shelf itself but there's also the back support that needs to be perfectly in line and each of the dominoes need to all line up. I do have to say that when your dominoes do line up perfectly it's a very good feeling. With the dominoes now all complete, we can glue and clamp our shelf together. So I think I've decided to make a slight change to the design here. Here's a reminder of what we're building overall. We've already built this. That's obviously the last part, but we're currently building this. Originally, I was anticipating of having these two shelves here and then this center console. However, this center console, in terms of total height or size, it's actually not very big. 
it's only about 380 millimeters so it's less than 40 centimeters it's not going to be a very big console so i'm thinking what i'm going to do is expand the height of this by at least another 20 centimeters which i give or take you know another eight inches give or take and then remove this top shelf so this will effectively come up like this otherwise this is too low to the ground my tv does fit in there but this isn't very far off the ground so you would have to be sort of viewing the tv downwards at an angle so i think this is the right thing to do so we'll remove this shelf so we won't build this now i just built this one and i think i will not build this one and i will make this one higher so now there's less to build so it should take quicker but uh, we're now moving on to this part dominoes now cut we can do a dry fit the middle panel is the one that I have the most concern about purely because it is dominoing right in the middle of the panel and it's very easy to mess this up fortunately everything looked good lined up well and came together easily Considering this is only the second time I've used the Domino, then I'm really happy with the results that I'm achieving here so far. It's a really easy tool to use and I can see why so many people love Dominoes. With the dry fit being successful, we now move on to the more stressful part of glue up. The original plan for this cabinet was actually to use 45 degree angles for all of the sides. However, that plan was very quickly scrapped when I realized that neither my table saw had the capacity to run panels this long and I didn't own a track saw capable of doing 45 degree angles. While we wait for that to dry, we work on the top bracket of the leg that will sit on top of the highest shelf.
I'll be making a profile edge for the cabinet that is the same as the profile on the shelves. This will tie in the theme to the cabinet and the shelves together and keep a consistent look and feel. To begin we give the edges a light sand. Then using a length of off cut we put a 45 degree chamfer on the leading edge over at the router table. Then using a round over bit on the trim router we complete the profile edge. And finally we cut the trim to size on the table saw. things that I now need to account for is the fact that now that I've made this much higher my original plan only accounted for two drawers here and then two cabinet doors here but now that we've gone much higher we have plenty of room and realistically we need to add a third drawer so that this doesn't look too funny because of that I need to redo where my drawer slides are going to go whenever I'm doing drawer slides and something I haven't shared is I always like to map out exactly where they need to go. So I'll always go into Google SketchUp and draw lines where they need to go and then create uh, rises or shims to the exact heights so that uh, I always know where the draw slides are going to go and it just takes out all of the guesswork or confusion or messing up a, a measurement because you know you're trying to work it out as you go so I always do this for draw slides and it always kind of works out that way so whenever I'm doing draws by doing this I think it eliminates the risk of error and makes it a lot easier so that's what I'm going to do now is to e cut some risers uh, shim it up and install some draw slides and you've seen me do that multiple times now so we'll go ahead and do that now With the drawer slides now installed, we can turn our attention to making some drawers.
drawers are now dry, stack them in there, they're not actually attached in there just yet, so they're not spaced or screwed in yet. But I wanted to try and turn my attention now to the cabinet doors and the drawer fronts here. Now, the dilemma I have, I'm not really certain if there's a best practice or what people, or if it's just a personal preference. I've tried to find some info and it seems to be torn between people saying the grain should go in a certain direction, horizontal, vertical, etc. Now, I have some spare panels and whatnot in here, but the grain would then be going uh, vertical. So the door would have vertical grain, but then that would mean either I do that as vertical grain for the draw fronts, or um, I have vertical grain here and I have horizontal grain here, which I checked with my wife who said she prefers it to go horizontally. And I guess I kind of prefer that too, but I don't know if there's a best practice regarding cabinet doors should the grain normally go like is it better for it to go horizontally not vertically or will there be is there any inherent risks I'm not 100% certain so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with horizontal but I'm going to use this panel which is a single piece and then that way we can match the grain going all the way from left to right or right to left or all the way horizontally. I mean, let me know in the comments what the next or what uh, is maybe best practice or it does it matter if it goes up or down? Does it matter if I do horizontal or vertical? Is it just personal preference or does it matter based on the timber or I mean, I've I've mounted one cabinet door in my entire very short woodworking career so far and that was just a MDF panel, so it didn't really matter. There was no grain orientation, obviously, but now we kind of do. So, look, I'm just gonna go with horizontal. I think that'll probably look the best for this, and, you know, fingers crossed it looks really good. So, what I'm gonna do now is probably just clean the drawers up a little bit, just a quick sand, uh, just get out some of the glue squeeze out, whatnot. Then I will mount them, and then cut this for the cabinetry so fingers crossed I know what I'm doing on that So all of the drawers are now installed and functioning very nicely. There is something incredibly satisfying when all your planning measurements come out exactly how you anticipated it or hoped that it would come out. So this looks all good. Now we tackle the cabinetry. So now we tackle the doors and the face frames here.
I've only mounted one cabinet door in my entire woodworking career so I'm not really certain what the best method here is in ensuring you get the right or correct sizing for an inset cabinet door. I'm kind of winging it here and just using sort of what I know from mounting the front of a drawer and hoping for the best here. Closely following the manufacturer instructions for the hinge, I made this template guide to help me position the holes for the bracket. These concealed hinges require a 35mm wide hole to be drilled into each panel door. I didn't own a 35mm Forstner bit, but I found this Craig concealed hinge jig at my local Bunnings, and considering a suitable Forstner bit on its own was nearly $35, this jig at around 50 Australian dollars isn't bad and it at least will help to at least drill these holes straight. While the Craig jig does appear to have some preset alignment holes for the hinge, I found that for me, those holes don't seem to line up with the hinge I was using. I'm not sure if this is because it's suited for a specific type of hinge or make of hinge or manufacturer, but in the end I guess it wasn't a big deal. I simply used a spring punch to mark where to drill and did so manually. So I started cutting the draw faces and everything seemed okay, I thought I'd done my calculations correctly, but I've made a mistake. Well I wouldn't say necessarily a mistake, but what I've done is not allowed for enough. So I mean I cut this panel, the four of it, exactly to the dimensions and I thought alright, if I cut the width of the kerf, we should be okay. However, obviously uh, or leave a, a kerf width, we should be okay. But uh, what I've found now is that, as you can see, the draw front, front of this one sits below it. Now, if I plane this down, yeah, of course that will work, but then I've um, got a significant shortfall up here. So, what I am going to do is try and... Well, what I'll do is I'll make good by gluing an extra strip just on the top of this one just to beef it up so that it's closer to the gap up here. I'll plane this one slightly down. We'll lose a little tiny bit of matching but I don't think it'll make too much difference. So unfortunately I do make mistakes and this is one that I will learn from so in the future I will allow extra around up here. So normally when I do ones like this I mean, I just cut individual panels. I don't really care about trying to match grains and things like that or colours or whatever it might be. I just cut, you know, each individual one to the shape and to fit it. But here we obviously want to avoid just having random material. We want to sort of continue the continuity of what we see here. So I will put in the little filler, I'll plane this one down slightly, and that should fix my mistake.
Okay, our drawers are now installed. This one was a bit of a tricky one to get in, as you saw. Had to do some finagling to get that one in there. But as we can see, I did make a mistake in the, like another mistake. So uh, I was supposed to add the strip at the top here. I accidentally added it at the bottom instead. So you, you can just tell that there's this slight one in here, only just. I think it'll sand out and blend in just fine. But I mean, I'm annoyed with myself because I just broke the continuity slightly. I mean, it still lines up as you can see, but it should be a smidgen lower going in this way than the gap at the top. But, we stand back. It's hard to tell. So, it's more obvious here, but this is a different piece. So this is, yeah. So these two actually do join together here. But as we stand back, not bad not bad at all rightio so here we are it's been a few days since the last part of this video for you guys it'll just be a few moments of fade to black but it's been a few days here um, the reason for the delay is because the other night I was talking with my wife and I was saying about well what are we gonna do for draw pulls draw handles and she looked at me and said, well, contemporary modern, it's not supposed to have any, it's supposed to be minimalist, it's supposed to be clean. And it dawned on me that she was pretty much right, as she is in many things. So, what I've been doing is I've switched out the drawers here, uh, the drawer slides I should say, because the drawer slides here were just normal drawer slides, but I've now switched out at least this one to a push to, push to open, and that works really good really happy with how that works and looks. I've only done that one because I'm waiting on more stock to arrive for the draw slides from my local Bunnings. I don't know why they only keep one or two of a few things, it's really irritating, but I need to wait for more to come before I can put those two in. Um, so that one's in, That one, these two still have the normal draw slides. And the other thing I've installed here is a push to open spring pinny thing here. So. That works really good too. Keeps the door nice and closed. And yeah, you know, I, I think it was the right decision. Having door pulls wouldn't have looked horrible, obviously, but you know, you want to keep the continuity and you know, the whole feature of this is looking at the grain and having it unbroken as it goes across. And obviously you'll get distracted by door pulls having there. So um, I think it's the right decision. So, yep, but yep, so we put in our springs, happy with the way those work, um, and happy with the way this one works, but just have to wait on a few more. So what I'll do in the meantime, while I wait for two more draw pulls, is I think I'll start sanding this just to start prepping it, because I think in the next few days, I need to start thinking about how to attach the legs to this one. And I'm starting to think also that I might need to add some extra support on this. This is starting to get quite heavy, with uh, everything on there. It doesn't even have um, the shelf in here yet, so there's still got to go a shelf. It doesn't even have a back yet as well. So it's going to start getting a bit weighty. And I don't think the way that this ladder style is going to be able to support all of that, at least not comfortably. So I think I may put some hidden back legs at the back of it, just so it still has the illusion of being a ladder style, but some extra support. I think it needs at least maybe one to sort of in here somewhere just to so that um, it's got a little bit more support.
now adding a rebate to the back of the cabinet so that it can accept a panel to go on later. In hindsight, I should have done this step earlier in the build when it was at the carcass stage. This would have made this part of the process much easier and a lot cleaner. With the design changes that I've made, especially to the height of the cabinet, it's become more apparent that simply having or attaching the long stretcher legs, the two legs, isn't going to be sufficient to support the weight. So what I'm going to do here is make a slight design addition and I'm going to add some additional support legs to the design now. Adding the legs means that we no longer have to build this as one unit. We can build this as two separate units, one for the cabinet component and one for the shelf. And this will make building much easier and also transportation and installation of the unit so much easier. I was originally holding off gluing the legs to the shelf purely because we were also going to need to glue them to the cabinet. But now that we've made this design change, we can go ahead and independently uh, attach the legs to the shelf and get this part of the build out of the way. Once the glue had dried for the left hand side, I repeated this same process to attach the leg for the right hand side. So now it's time to make the legs for the cabinet and I'm once again joined by my young apprentice in the shop who's going to help me out with this. Are you helping or hindering? <laughs> helping or hindering? Alright, here we go. You want to grab those other ones? Bring them over here. It's always fun to have my daughter in the shop, but sometimes it's hard to get her to concentrate, especially if she knows that the camera's on. Can I help with the fingers? Yeah. You hold this, put it on there so it matches up. So make sure it's flush there. Yep, yeah, okay, that's good. Right, so these are my legs that I've quickly whipped up. So I milled some timber off camera and cut them. So it'll still have the same seven degree at the front, but at the back it's just be 90. I made two of these and I'm going to connect these with dominoes and this will just help support the center console a bit more. Um, so I'll feel a little bit more comfortable. So I still need to trim these to length and I'll do that on the table saw once I've done these ones. But I'll go ahead and uh, domino those ones up now. Once the legs were dry and I'd given them a quick sand, I headed over to the table saw to cut the legs to their final height.
And then to finish them off, I rounded over all of the edges with that round over bit on the trim router. I will be gluing the legs, but I have drilled and countersunk some holes in the underside of the leg that will accept some screws just to hold it there while the glue sets. With the legs now dry, we can flip it over and start the finishing process. I'll be using the same wipe-on wax that I used on the shelves. It's uh, really easy to apply finish and it really brings out the colors in the timber. I'll do two coats of this wipe-on wax to complete the finish. Here's the final product, a ladder inspired center console and shelf. Influenced by what I saw in a store, but 100% conceived and built with my own hands. There were many lessons learnt on this one and I feel like it was yet another step on the woodworking journey ladder, if you'll excuse the use of the pun. So thanks for joining me on this one and I will see you on the next video.